S.D. Lauder, whose birth name was Josephine Esther Menzer, was born on July 1, 1906, in Corona, Queens, New York City, to Hungarian Jewish immigrant parents, Max and Rose Menzer. She graduated from Newton High School. Most of her childhood was spent making ends meet. She worked at the family's hardware store where she learned how to be a successful retailer. Her uncle, Dr. John Schatz, was a chemist. The young Este was fascinated watching her uncle create facial products. After graduating from high school, Este began selling her uncle's blends to her friends. She believed in the products and was obsessed with showing people how to improve their skin. Growing up, Esti learned about skincare and beauty rituals from her mother. She started selling her uncle's beauty products to friends and family. In 1930, she married Joseph Lauter, later Lauder. In 1939, they changed the family name to Lauder. The couple divorced in 1939, and she moved to Florida. She pursued other, moved to Florida. She pursued other, but found no love. They remarried in 1942. Their second son Ronald was born in 1944. Their second marriage lasted 40 years. S.D. and Joseph became business partners, and S.D. continued to develop and sell her skincare products. Before we continue our story, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Don't forget also to turn on the notification bell to be updated in our every uploads. In 1946, SD officially founded the SD Lauder Companies, with the super-rich all-purpose cream as one of her first products. They made their items using the kitchen of a former restaurant as their manufacturing facility. From the very beginning Este was determined to have her products available in only the most elegant upscale luxury stores. With that plan in mind, she tackled the market she approached the top ones, and was turned away by all. She was tireless, and would not give up, she kept calling and calling waiting outside their offices all day. Th her first order was sold out in two days. Her products worked and satisfied customers told their friends. The company's early success was based on Esther's hands-on approach to selling her products, often offering demonstrations and free samples. SD Lauder started the company with a small range of skincare products. She began by selling her products to friends and clients at beauty salons. S.D. Lauder was a marketing pioneer, introducing techniques such as gift with purchase and the concept of the beauty counter in department stores. She believed in the power of personal relationships with customers and in providing them with a luxurious experience. In 1947, S.D. Lauder got her first big break when Saks Fifth Avenue in New York City agreed to carry her products at the prestigious department store. This marked the beginning of S.D. Lauder's presence in high-end retail. In the street, touching the customer was her unique approach to show and explain the product herself she would proudly state in her autobiography. Este decided to invest the entire $50,000 of their advertising budget in producing samples. The samples S were offered through direct mail, charity giveaways and as gifts with purchases, the famous elegantly assembled Este Lauder gift bags began to appear at Charity Ball after Charity Ball. Este also worked on the editors of major New York-based fashion magazines. She demonstrated her products to them and once they saw the magic for themselves, she got all the free press. Este Lauder was a marketing pioneer, introducing techniques such as gift with purchase and the concept of the beauty counter in department stores. She believed in the power of personal relationships with customers and in providing them with a luxurious experience. In 1953, Este introduced their first fragrance Youth Dew, a bath oil, that doubled as a perfume. Este made it an affordable luxury at just $8.50. This resulted in Youth Dew generating 80% of the company's sales. Este was a pioneer in the elegant over-the-top presentation of her products. She focused on packaging well before her. She was very particular about her sales force. Este hand-picked all her salespeople and educated them to evaluate each customer's skin and be ready to touch everyone who came along. She made herself an elegant lady of refinement and continued her rise in the social circles. The company continued to grow, introducing new products and expanding its range. 
In the 1950s and 1960s, SD Lauder expanded internationally, entering the European and Asian markets. The brand gained a reputation for offering high-quality skincare and makeup products. SD Lauder's products gained popularity, and she expanded her business to department stores across the United States. In the 1960s and 1970s, the company successfully entered international markets, marking a significant milestone in its global presence. SD Lauder introduced two notable brands under its umbrella, Aramis, a line of prestige men's grooming products, and Clinique, one of the first dermatologists developed allergy-tested skincare lines. Clinique, in particular, became a significant success and is well known for its fragrance-free and allergy-tested products. SD Lauder companies went public in 1995, listing on the New York Stock Exchange. This move helped the company raise capital for further expansion and development. Additionally, the Advanced Night Repair Serum, launched in 1982, became a skincare staple. SD Lauder's sons, Leonard and Rommeld, became actively involved in the business. Leonard served as the company's president, and Rommeld oversaw the Clinique brand. The Lauder family played a crucial role in the company's growth and success. SD Lauder was involved in various philanthropic activities. The Breast Cancer Research Foundation, founded by Evelyn H. Lauder, Leonard's wife, in 1993, became a significant cause supported by the company. SD Lauder companies went public in 1995, listing on the New York Stock Exchange. This move helped the company raise capital for further expansion and development. Over the years, SD Lauder companies acquired several other beauty and skincare brands. This strategy allowed the company to diversify its product offerings and appeal to a broader range of consumers. SD Lauder continued to be involved in the company until her death on April 24, 2004, at the age of 97. While Joseph Lauder died on January 15, 1983, her legacy lives on in the SD Lauder brand, which remains a symbol of luxury, innovation, and quality in the beauty industry. In 2009, William P. Lauder, the grandson of SD Lauder, became the executive chairman of the company. Fabrizio Frieda was appointed president and CEO, leading the company through a period of continued growth. Like many companies, SD Lauder has focused on sustainability and corporate responsibility. The company has implemented various initiatives to reduce its environmental impact and support social causes. SD Lauder remains a global leader in the beauty and skincare industry, with a wide range of products distributed globally through various channels, including department stores, specialty retailers, and online platforms. The brand is synonymous with luxury, quality, and innovation in the beauty industry. SD Lauder's life story is a testament to her entrepreneurial spirit, marketing acumen, and dedication.